The Second Coming is a poem composed by Irish poet William Butler Yeats in 1919, first printed in the Dial magazine in November 1920 and included in his 1921 collection of verses, Michael Roberts and the Dancer. Turning and turning in the widening gyre. So William Butler Yeats started the line with the turning and turning in the widening gyre. But what is turning? The world is turning. And the world is turning in what? The world is turning in the gyre. So what is the meaning of gyre? Gyre means the whirlpool. So the world is turning and spinning out of the control in that gyre, in that whirlpool that is getting worse. So the figure of speech that we can see here is the metaphor in the widening gyre. In the widening gyre means the chaos is increasing. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. Now the situation is getting worse. The falcon, falcon means the individual person or the society is no longer able the falconer. Falconer means falconer any authority, any power. So now the falconer is no longer following the, the orders of the falconer. So there is no touch. The figure of speech that we can see is the symbolism. The falcon, falcon symbolizes the people and the falconer symbolizes the authority. Now the things fall apart. The center cannot hold. And now situation, situation is more getting worse, like things fall apart, the center cannot hold. It means the society is falling apart because there is no strong foundation to keep things together. The metaphor, the center is a metaphor for the value, for the rules. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. Now mere anarchy, anarchy, anarchy is losing. Anarchy like it is something that, that, was, that was tight before. But now it has been loosed upon the world. Now the anarchy is loosed upon the world. It means anarchy means the chaos is chaos is spreading everywhere. Now it, is, it could be a personification because anarchy is given human-like quality. It's it is loosed as it was a it is uh, it is sets it sets free. So the blood dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere. Now what is blood dimmed? Blood dimmed means the violence. Okay. So blood dimmed. Blood dimmed the violence is spreading everywhere. You can imagine you can you can have that imagination that at the, the time of uh, the World War First and World War Second, what was that situation? So the violence is spreading everywhere, like a flood of blood. So it, it is again the personification and also the imagery. The best lack all conviction, while the wars are full of passionate intensity. So now here William Butler is, uh, is trying to say that the first are full of passionate intensity. It means that the good people are unsure, they are inactive, while the bad people are full of energy and chaos. So this is what William Butler Yeats explained in this first stanza. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. So in the first line, Yeats was sure, but he was saying that something, some revelation is at hand. He did not explain it, but in the second line, he said that second coming is at hand. At hand means something is so near. So Yeats repeats the word the at hand, at hand. He repeats it to represent or to emphasize how close the event is, the second coming. Hardly are those words out. So now Yeats says these words, something strange and powerful begins to appear. So hardly it comes. So Yeats uses a reservation here to show that how quickly the time is changing. When a vast image out of the spiritual mundi troubles my sight. So now Yeats sees a huge image in his mind, spiritual mundi. It is a Latin fridge, means world spirit which represents the shared ideas and experiences of the humanity. So this image comes from a deep collective source. It could also be an illusion. Spiritual Bundi is an illusion, a reference to a larger mystical source of knowledge. Somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man. So now Yeats describes a strange creature, part like lion or part of like a human. This represents something powerful and dangerous, a mixture of strength and intelligence. So this is the imagery that Yeats described here 
a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun. So this means the creature's stare is cold, emotionless, like a harsh burning sun. So it is a spilly. He compares the creature's gaze to the sun using that edge. It's moving its slow thighs while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. So now he says that the creature's creature moves slowly and the desert birds around it are angry and they are disturbed. The darkness drops again. So now the darkness, darkness means the chaos, it drops again. It is coming again. Now the speaker is aware that something ominous is coming. That 20th century of a stony sleep. So now the 20th century of a stony sleep. Stony sleep is a metaphor and also the, also the alteration. So for the humanity that is being in a long stagnant period, almost like a spiritual slumber for for 2000 years, it represents a time when nothing had changed. The humanity has been unresponsive to the world around them, were vexed to the nightmare by a rocking cradle. Then Yeats says that this long sleep was vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. The rocking cradle, it is a metaphor for the birth of Christ, uh, which, should be, which should be peaceful. But uh, instead of this, it causes a disturbance, turning a peaceful image into something that is disturbing. It hints like a, the birth of Christ. And what rough beast its are come round at last? So now Yeats asks, what rough beast? Rough beast is a metaphor for the darkness, for the chaos, the destructive force. The phrase it are come around. So it signals that this moment is a moment of change has finally arrived. The its are come round slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. Now the beast is described as slouching towards the Bethlehem to be born. So the huge of word slouches. It personifies the beast giving it a slow ominous movement and here the twist Bethlehem refers the birth of the Jesus Christ.